Well, hello everyone. Um, this isn't a video that I planned on making, but uh, I thought I, I'd do it anyway. What's up everyone? By the way, welcome to Total Sport. If you're anything, Chris, why are you sat down? Uh, no fa no uh, facial hair at all. Um, <laughs> I decided to shave this morning. Um, but I, I want to be talking about Twitter today. I want to be talking about social media in general. Not This isn't scripted, by the way. I haven't even got a running order. I'm just going to ramble about this because it's a massively important issue to me um, and to other people. You know, I'm not trying to be a saviour here because some of these issues aren't my issues. I'm not experiencing them. In fact, all of them aren't. Um, but just because it's not my problem doesn't mean that it doesn't affect me. It makes me question society. It makes me question what's going on in the world at the moment. Um, so, yeah. I'm not going to ask for anyone to subscribe because this is a bit more of a serious video, but it's going to be split up into a couple of sections. Um, I'm going to start off with um, the world of football Twitter. I think people underestimate the power of anonymity uh, to start off with. Um, if you're hidden behind a footballer's face, you can say what you want because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to you. You know, you can go and tell someone to kill themselves. You can go and tell them they're a monkey. You can go and, you know, insult their family. And no one will remember because you're hidden behind someone's face. If I went and called someone a monkey or used the N-word to someone, my career would be over. It is is a difficult thing to say what it would happen if a kid had done that or if a kid had said that these things that drive people insane because you don't know how old these people are and that's where the pain that's where the the anonymity anonymity is one of the most powerful weapons in current society and people use it to their advantage to troll other people to to make them feel bad impersonating other people you you name it like at the end of the day these cults are poisonous uh, in, in the football community. I have met so many people, so many great people in football Twitter and in Twitter in general. Like, some of my mates are from Twitter and, you know, it's gutting to see that this community is so cancerous in what it does and how it portrays itself because it has so much potential to be such a great community. Um, you know, I don't mind a bit of banter. You know, you can you can take the mick out of people. Um, but when it gets personal and not about performance, but more about, you know, agendas, for example, um, it, it, it's, it's cancerous. It makes people feel shit. What's the point at the moment? Everyone's got so much going on in their lives with COVID and to make people feel even worse on an online platform when they are trying to escape real life is grim. So now I'm going to go on to talk about some cancel culture. Um, it, it's intertwined. All of this is intertwined and linked when you're young. You say stupid things. You do stupid things. Like even some of these kids who are who are me who are being incredibly racist. Okay, they're young. They're stupid. At the end of the day, and I'm not defending them at all here. However, people make mistakes. I think if you'd have given 14 year old me the platform, I'm not saying I'd be racist, but I'm saying I would be stupid with some of the things that I would say. And I'm I'm happy that. I was instilled from a youngster to not say anything stupid online. And obviously, as my feelings and, and stuff have, have grown, racism is one of the worst issues in the world at the moment. And it's something that I'm passionate about trying to stop. Um, it's the same, you know, with fascism, with homophobia, with uh, Islamophobia. You know, with the stuff we've done, we're, we're passionate about stopping this. But cancel culture is something that I think is a side effect of having constant communication. You know, you're able to keep in contact with people who are like-minded and therefore form cults that can be dangerous online. So in 2012, Andre Gray posted something homophobic. In 2012. Okay, so I'm going to take you back to 2012. Like, homophobia has never been okay. Um, I will put it out there. But, when in the playground, you call your mates gay. That that used to be a thing. And it it's probably still is in, in the playground. You know, and the so social media is basically a big playground for these kids. 
if you call your mates gay back then, it's not a big punishment. You wouldn't get punished for it. Um, but that's probably just, just me saying it because I used to do it. Everyone did in my school. And everyone probably still does in their own schools. And it would be hypocritical of anyone, especially my generation, to go out and perfectly find something from 2012 and say that it's out of order. So I heard a analogy about this on um, Jack Maitapia, Tobe Jizzle said, said it. And he said, imagine, right, from tomorrow, petrol cars... You know, it's a sin to drive a petrol car. And if you do it, it's it's almost as bad as anything, okay? And, you know, everyone gets abused for driving a petrol car. But then someone goes out, finds a picture of someone driving a petrol car in 2012 and brings it up. The culture's different. You know, times have changed. People change. That's nine years ago. And... You can't expect people to be, everyone to be squeaky clean. In fact, it would be a boring world if everyone was squeaky clean. Everyone's got their faults, okay? We're not robots. We're human beings at the end of the day. And nothing infuriates me more than people digging up old stuff. Now, luckily, I didn't really have access to it at that age. But some kids do, all right? And they say stupid things. That doesn't mean, okay, that they should have their career finished. It doesn't mean that they should, you know, have their whole lives opportunities taken away from them to be for, for, the, for the sake of cancelling. You know, I hate this culture. It's just poisonous. It's as bad as football Twitter and some of them overlap. So that's my say on cancel culture. But I, I, I want to talk now about um, the preaching of mental health. Obviously, people are accountable for their actions. Everyone is. If you do something, you have to own up to it. I hate people using Caroline Flack as a weapon. So if you don't know, Caroline Flack killed herself last year after stuff that happened with her husband and the, and the media, she, the stuff in the media that she received. And people use this be kind message, which was great at the time, you know, fair enough. Um, but... <sighs> People use the be kind message after not being kind themselves. So, for example, you know, I've seen I've seen people use the rate you be racist to people and then use the be kind card when they get when they get called out on it. And now, now before we move on, there is a difference between being called out and being cancelled. You you can't be if you do stuff stupid, like if you do things stupidly and you're consistently racist, then you know there's there's grounds for being like a criminal. Okay, which is basically like legal cancelling. Okay, the be kind message has been taken so far out of proportion by people who use it as sort of like a no offence mechanism, and nothing. It, it, it's using a girl's death to your advantage, using it as part of your argument. Nah, it's out of order, man. It really is, and nothing winds me up more. It's only a short little section on this, but. You can't do that as a moral human being. You're not a robot, as I said. You know, you're going to make errors. But the be kind message, it applies everywhere. And you can't just use it to work for your argument. Because it works over every argument. And finally, I'm going to talk about racism. Um, because I, as a white man, you know, I've never experienced this. So, you know, I'm talking vicariously. Um, and, um, I, I could go out and be passionate and say, how can you judge someone for the color of your, their skin? How can you do that? When, in honesty, I don't know how, you know, it, 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 it's disgusting. People are human beings, but everyone's heard this recycled jargon before. We all know, like any sane human being knows that racism is wrong. Any sane human being knows that racism is institutionally put into us as kids across the world. So say some kid, and I'm, I'm going to link it back to social media again. So this is what happened to Naby Keita and Trent Alexander-Arnold today. Now, I'm not just saying this because the Liverpool players. I, I've brought it up over and over again for other different players. Wilfred Zaha, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, um, you know, 
there's so many Raheem Sterling's a big one I did my whole English coursework on Raheem Sterling's uh, media problems and what why everyone's so institutionally racist and, and how we, we can try and change that um, but this is the particular example today and I don't think these kids know what they're doing or if they do you know I, I don't know what would be worse I don't know what would be worse right if they called these people monkeys without knowing like what that means if they if they use that emoji without knowing how much offense it can cause a and b how institutionally it is ingrained in ourselves it makes me ill thinking that people weren't educated on this and people aren't being educated on this you know i don't think these kids should lose if they are kids which i'm assuming uh, if they are kids i don't think they should lose any hope in their lives i think they should be educated um Obviously, they need to know what's going on. Um, but black and ethnic minority people were slaves for years. You know, I, I'm not going to go into facts and figures, but what what happened to them is disgusting. You know, it's imprinted onto whole new generations. Um, and it's not the white people that are alive now fault, which some racists use as a weapon you know it we we can't take accountability for what happened 400 years ago but we can change it can't we we can change it i believe in the vast majority of people that we, we can change this and yes social media gives amplification to the minority who decide to be so unbelievably out of touch with society who decide to be unaccepting of different cultures but we're not we're not gone here you know, this can change. I believe, I do believe that once this new generation is educated on what happens, this world will be a better place. You know, once we have a racist, once we don't have a man who calls Islamic women letterboxes out of number 10, this world will be a better place. When we had a US president who was unbelievably racist to Mexicans especially. He's gone now. Hopefully, the man in, who replaces him is a little bit better. We learn from our peers. We learn from the media. We learn from the government. So we And we have the power to change all three. I think we should. Thank you for watching, if you have. Um, make sure you take everything in mind. And hopefully, I, I, I've, I've struck some chords today. See you next time.